Welcome back to The Code Wolf. Today we're going to explore the official new .NET AI MCP server project template. This new template makes it easier to build, package, and distribute MCP servers. So we have four goals for this video, timestamped below, which are get set up to work with this template, build a really basic MCP server with it, package and push that MCP server to NuGet, and then consume that package hosted on NuGet from GitHub Copilot or really any tool that supports MCP server connections. If you're brand new to the model context protocol, I've also provided a segment at the end of the video you can skip to that provides a standalone conceptual overview. Let's get started. If you enjoy this content or find this video useful, please consider subscribing to help reach the goal of 10,000 subscribers. I know we can do this. And be sure to check out the rest of the channel for all kinds of other AI development and cloud content. All right, so for this video, we're going to be working with the Microsoft.extensions.ai.templates package. So .NET gives us the ability to package up project templates inside of NuGet packages so we can pull those down and then we'll have access to those templates in tools like the .NET CLI or Visual Studio when we go to create new projects. But we're getting a little bit ahead of ourselves. So first I wanna jump over to this blog post and I wanna give a shout out to John, Joel, and John. I'll provide a link to this in the description, but they've put together this nice blog post that walks through a lot of the information we'll be covering uh, in this video, though we'll be expanding on some areas and actually going through this hands-on, but I encourage you to check this out. Now, this blog post also highlights the prereqs for working with these templates. So you will need .NET 10, for example, Preview 6 or higher, and you can just download that from the usual page here. I'll also include these prereq links. Um, I'd recommend using Visual Studio Code for this flow, but you can also use Visual Studio. I just think Visual Studio Code has a bit nicer MCP server experience overall, so we'll be working with that IDE. You will also need the GitHub Copilot extension for your IDE. So in VS Code, you're gonna to wanna to search for GitHub Copilot and make sure you have that installed. And that'll allow us to test MCP server functionality. And finally, if you want to actually package up your MCP server and push it out to NuGet, you will need a NuGet account for that. So there's a link to that as well. Just check the description for all of these. So you can kind of pick and choose here how far you wanna go with this. If you don't actually wanna publish a package, for example, you don't need a NuGet account. So assuming you have all those in place, let's go ahead and install the MCP template. So you'll just want to open up a command prompt. And from here, we can use the .NET new install command. So this allows us to install new templates uh, through packages. And so we'll just say microsoft.extensions.ai.templates. And I already have this installed, but it'll try to update to the latest version if you already have it. And then it tells us that there's two templates in this package. And now we're ready to start actually building out an MCP server and packaging it and all of that goodness. Okay, so now let's actually create a project using the template that we just installed. And to do that, we can either use the .NET CLI or we can use Visual Studio. So I have Visual Studio open over here. And after you install these templates, if you search for MCP, you should see this project type here, this local MCP server, and you could just go through the usual dialogue flow and create that. So this does work with Visual Studio as well, if you wanna go that route. I'm gonna show the CLI version here now. So we would wanna do .NET new MCP server, since that's the project template name. And let's give this a name of CodeWolf MCP server. So I'll hit enter and that was created successfully. And then let's just navigate down into that directory and do a .NET build to make sure that that's all in place. And there we go, that succeeded. So now I'm gonna open this up in VS Code and pull this over here. So here is our project, and I'll zoom in a little bit here, but we can see the structure of what this template gives us. And there's a few different points of interest here. So like most .NET apps, we have a program.cs file, and this is actually pretty minimal if we go in here, but you'll notice we have this add MCP server method, and if we hover over that, it just says that it adds the MCP server to the service collection, and then we also configure that with standard IO. But the most interesting part is this with tools method. So this is where we would register classes that contain methods or tools that the AI model can call through our MCP server. So right now, it's registering this random number tool. So if we go over into our tools folder, 
we can see where that lives. And this is just a class that has a method configured to act as an MCP server tool. So right now this just gets a random number. This is kind of the placeholder method generated by our template. But you can see it's decorated with MCP server tool, as well as a description that helps out the AI to understand what this is for and has other purposes as well. And we also have descriptions on our parameters and so on. So this just returns a random number, but our AI models could plug into this uh, for that functionality. Now, of course, we can add our own tools as well. We'll come back to that in a second. But let's look at a couple other points of interest in our project first. So for one thing, we have this README. And if you read through this, this is actually pretty useful information. This kind of walks you through the whole project template flow and a lot of what we're doing here. So it'll talk about publishing to NuGet and developing locally, testing your MCP server, and so on. So I definitely recommend reading through this. This will also influence the description of your package when you push it up to NuGet. So if you are planning on publishing a package for real, you're definitely going to want to replace this content with your own. This is just here uh, as kind of a getting started resource. It's also worth mentioning that the csproj file of this project is already configured to be kind of NuGet friendly, if you will. So inside of here, there's all these package metadata nodes already here for you to fill out. So you can give it a package ID and a version and so on. And we'll come back to this as well. But those are in place for you. And finally, the last piece is in this MCP folder. We have a server.json file. And the server.json is basically a way of statically describing our MCP server. And it packages a bunch of useful information in when we publish this as a NuGet package. So you can see it's asking for names and descriptions and package IDs and so on. And if you go out to the actual model context protocol repo out on GitHub, you can actually read more about this server.json file. So you'll see it says, helps with discoverability on centralized registries. And down here, it talks about how when it's packaged in with the source code of an MCP server, it provides a structured way to identify a server given just its source code. So this is kind of part of the MCP spec and it just provides a description of our MCP server for various purposes. So we'll also definitely want to fill this out. So now let's actually expand this project a little bit and prep this to send it up to NuGet as a package. So inside of our tools folder, I'm going to add a new file just to show that we can add more tools to this. And I'm going to call this rssfeedreader.cs. And then I'm just going to paste in some sort of boilerplate code here. Um, we're not that interested in the nuances of parsing RSS feeds. But basically, this tool provides a method that the AI model can call to retrieve and parse RSS feeds. Now, some AI models are able to do this themselves if they have the capabilities to fetch internet pages and parse them and so on. However, by providing this as an MCP server tool, this would also allow AI models that can't scrape the web like that to retrieve an RSS feed. And it also gives you more structured control over what you do with that data when it comes back. So you can see we're specifically pulling the title and description and formatting that in a certain way. Obviously, you probably wouldn't build this exact solution in the real world, but I just wanted to give an example of a slightly more robust tool that might have some value. So we're still decorating this method with the MCP server tool and description attributes. And then we have this get headlines from RSS feed, and that accepts a parameter of an RSS URL. And so this is just another tool in our MCP server. Now, of course, we also need to remember to register that here. So we're going to say with tools RSS feed reader. And so there's our registered tool. Now from here, we'll probably want to test our MCP server. And to do that, we can add a new folder. And this is kind of a special folder in VS Code dot, called dot VS Code. And then inside of this folder, we need a new file called MCP json and inside of here we'll paste a configuration for our mcp server so i'll change this to codewolf mcp server and this is all just kind of standard configurations for working with mcp servers in vs code but i just want to show you this kind of step by step so this is going to just run our project and start that as an mcp server so that we can use it here over in copilot and so now it's giving us this option to start the server and again, this is calling the .NET run command, and we're just passing in our root project here. So this is going to start this up in the context of VS Code so that our Copilot agent can talk to it. So I'm gonna say start, 
And then over in Copilot, we just want to make sure that that tool got picked up. So if we click this little tools icon, then let's see what's listed here so we can kind of scroll through here. And sure enough, there's our CodeWolf MCP server. So we have two methods here or two tools. So we have get headlines from RSS and then that original get random number. So let's give this a try. So I'll say a copilot, make sure we're online here. And there we are. So I'm going to say, get me the RSS feed for the New York Times technology category. Uh, you can use whatever site you want, but I know they have a lot of RSS feeds. So I'll prompt that. And then Copilot is going to see that we have an RSS feed tool available to us. So it's going to ask us if we want to run this get headlines from RSS from our CodeWolf MCP server. So this is great. It's working right away. And I'll say continue. And there we go. There's the results of our RSS feed. So that's kind of cool. It ran our tool and printed that out for us. We could also try our get random number method. So I could say, get me a random number. And there it goes. It's going to use the get random number tool from the MCP server. So I'll say continue. And that should generate that for us. So both of our tools are working. And now we're ready to prep this project and publish it up to NuGet. All right, so to publish this project, we basically just have to fill in the values in the csproj file and the server.json that we looked at earlier. And so let's just start at the top with this uh, server.json. And for a demo app, a lot of the specifics here don't really matter that much, but I'll just kind of fill this in the best we can here. So for the description, let's say a CodeWolf MCP server, and then it has some kind of placeholder suggestions here for what to put as the name. So I'm just going to put uh, my GitHub username here like it suggested. And then the same down here. And I don't actually have a repo for this project yet, so I'm just going to kind of leave this. Um, it won't matter once it's actually published. Now for our package ID, for demo purposes, this one does matter. So I'm just going to say CodeWolf MCP server. And we'll say that this is 1.0. Uh, and down here we can say 1.0 as well. And note that you can also pass in arguments or environment variables as well, but we're not using that right now. So this file is all set. And now let's go down to our csproj. So here we're going to want to set our package metadata again. So for our package ID, we said that was CodeWolf MCP server. I'm just going to double check that those line up. And they do. So there's our ID. And then for the package version, uh, let's set this to be 1.0 again. And for the description, we'll say code wolf MCP server. And that should be good enough for our csproj file here. All right, and so to get our project packaged and actually pushed up to NuGet, there's a couple commands we have to run. So back in our terminal, first I'm gonna run .NET pack and specify release. And that's going to build for us successfully there. And for the next command, I'm just going to paste this in so we get this exactly right. So we're using the .NET NuGet push command. And then I'm going to specify the path to our package there. And then you'll need your API key. So this is something you would get from your profile out on NuGet.org after you've signed in. And you'd never want to share this out like this. I'm just going to regenerate this after the demo, so I'm including it here. And finally, we specify nougat.org as the source with index.json. So I'm going to hit enter and let that run. And it looks like I actually get a conflict. I ran this behind the scenes once already, so it doesn't like that I'm trying to push the same version. So I'm actually just going to increment this in the csproj file as well as in the server file here. And then I'll run another pack and then just rerun that command. And so there we go. Our package was pushed. So now the next step is to actually go out to NuGet and find that package. So over in our browser, I have that homepage open. And then let's just search for CodeWolf. And right away, there's one package. And there's our CodeWolf MCP server. And on the details page, we can see everything about our package. So there's the version 1.0.1, since I had to increment that. And down here, notice our README content pulls in. So that's where I was saying you're going to want to rewrite the README for your specific package, obviously. But you can see all the versions and all of the other content here, just like any other NuGet package. Now, you might be wondering, well, how do I actually use this package as an MCP server like we looked at earlier? Well, let's do that next. 
So now let's see how to actually use this NuGet package and consume it like an external user would or someone besides ourselves as the developer. And on this details page, it actually tells you how to use this package. So it says this package contains an MCP server and you can use it in VS Code using the same configuration file we set up earlier. So this time we're just going to copy this MCP server configuration code here instead of the local configuration that we used earlier. And so for this demo, I've actually opened up an empty demo folder in a totally new VS Code session just to provide an example of how this would work for an external user or just outside of our development environment. And so let's create that uh, .vs code folder. And inside of that, we want to add a file called mcp.json. And then again, we want to grab this code here. So we'll copy this off of the NuGet site and paste that in here. And notice this time what we're specifying the CodeWolf MCP server as the arguments. And then we can start up our server. And so this is actually going to pull the package down and start up the server for us. So then over in our Copilot chat, we can again say, hello, and make sure we're online here. And then I'm going to say, get me an RSS feed from the New York Times uh, business category this time and it's going to go to work and notice that it's still found our MCP server. So I'm going to say continue and it's going to work on that and it's going to bring back our headlines, of course, and you can see the output here uh, from our MCP server. So this is great. We're now using this as a package uh, from NuGet. So we published that up and now we can pull it back down and use it and distribute that to other users. So I hope you enjoyed this video. Please hit those subscribe and like buttons if you found this useful. And I'll see you next time here at the Code Wolf. Remember, you can also stick around at the end of the video here for an overview of the Model Context Protocol. I'm just attaching this for any users who are looking for that introduction as part of this video. Thanks again. Before we really dive into the MCP server demo and code, let's first make sure we understand what the Model Context Protocol actually is. Now, this is not going to be a deep dive into the protocol, I just want to provide an overview and introduction to it so that the rest of this video will make sense. So the model context protocol is an open protocol to standardize integrations between AI apps and external tools and data sources. So this diagram is taken from the Microsoft docs and it gives us kind of a visual of how this works. So first we would have a host and that'll be something like VS code or another IDE or even a custom app. And that uses an MCP client. And you can kind of think of this like an HTTP client where your app will use that client to connect to a server. Well, in this case, we're using a client object to connect to an MCP server over the MCP protocol. And so we use that protocol to talk to different servers. So these MCP servers are sitting out there either locally or remote, and these provide different sets of functionality. So maybe one MCP server talks to a REST API to retrieve data, Another might uh, run custom business logic to process tasks for the app, or another might access third-party APIs, such as a GitHub MCP server for data about GitHub repos, or maybe some other MCP servers from Google or Microsoft and so on to access your data or various services. Remote MCP servers are actually where a lot of the value often is because these are essentially ready to go and you can just kind of plug them into your app using the MCP protocol. So you'll notice on this bottom one, uh, this remote MCP server would exist outside of your computer. So this other box is all assuming local uh, setup. And once you can connect remotely, the sky's kind of the limit. So this could talk to web APIs from other companies or other services. And these remote MCP servers can just do a lot. Now this might sound familiar because in the past, we've always had tool calling or function calling with these AI models, which can run custom functionality or we have RAG where we can plug into different data sources in different ways. The MCP protocol does provide very similar functionality, but it standardizes it over this open protocol. So I think people tend to overthink MCP. It's essentially just a standardized way of hooking up to all these tools and resources, similar to how we have in the past, but in a more standardized way and in a more structured way so that it's repeatable and can be plugged into various different apps instead of everyone building their own implementation. 
And again, often the real value is in those remote MCP servers, but of course you can build your own and deploy them to your own servers or even just run them locally. 